today I did not go to boot camp again. The main reason I didn't go is because Roz texted me and said that she wasn't going because she had to work. So I'm realising that one of my major motivations is meeting up with friends and having a coffee afterwards. <laughs> but what I need to concentrate on today is getting the house straight because we've got people coming around for dinner tonight. And the book, I'll link it in the description, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying, is really helping. And the thing that it's really helping me with right now is the distinction that she's made between tidying as in putting away things in the places they should go and having a major sort out so I'm going to concentrate on tidying because I do have places for all my things and I'm going to resist the temptation of having a big sort out of rooms and that will save time and I'm going to keep having a major sort out of rooms as a separate thing that I spend time on in order to declutter it etc. I don't want to keep blaming other people, <laughs> but I'm just about to. <laughs> but I think this habit crept into my life when I got married to Ben because he hasn't ever made that distinction. So if I ask him to tidy something, as in empty the dishwasher and put away the dishes, then suddenly everything will be in different cupboards, which I find very disorientating. <laughs> And also, Ben really enjoys change, so if he tidies a room, he moves all the furniture around as well. But I'm going to resist that temptation, otherwise I'm going to get bogged down, I'm going to get tired out, and I'm not going to be ready. And I'm not going to enjoy it when they arrive, because I'm going to be absolutely tired out. Let's crack on. Well, it has suddenly become an incredibly beautiful afternoon. I've popped to the garden centre to get some more fairy lights, because the ones we've got going down the mirror in the kitchen have gone on the blink. Well, I've spent the rest of the afternoon tidying the house, which is reasonably tidy now. And I bought some new fairy lights at the garden centre because ours were on the blink, literally. <laughs> and I've got to set the table still, light those candles, and I'm just about to start cooking. I'm going to do like a Moroccan kind of thing. So it will be tasty food, but it won't be too kind of posh and it's just going to be nice and casual. And it's November the 5th, and that is the night in the UK that we have fireworks. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Look it up, Google it. It is another beautiful autumn day. It's Sunday morning. Instead of having a church service this morning or going to the main church, we're going to have a breakfast with our small group. heading is to a bit called the ledges to see if I can find it can't find it anywhere <laughs> oh yeah here we go Ben's found a hollowish tree <laughs> Is it warmer in there? Yeah. <laughs> book, yeah. 
came here in spring when all the bluebells were out and I don't think I ever edited that footage. So I could do a combination of the ledges in spring and the ledges in autumn. So we walked up this path here down this way where we get an amazing view over the ledge some dogs having fun Step. <laughs> this is so beautiful. These are quite nice shots. What do you like about coming out on a day like this? I know it's a bit chilly, but... Getting back and having a nice hot cup of tea. <laughs> It's very beautiful, isn't it? It's very peaceful, very quiet. And if you just take your time to look, you can find and discover lots of wonderful little things and textures and colours and um, fungi and things like that. Are you going to upload your photographs to Flickr or anything like that that people can look at? Possibly. I'd like to print some, actually, and put them on the wall. So we have had a very enjoyable walk, but uh, our feet are numb now. <laughs> That's how cold it is. It's both our left feet. Yeah, why are our left feet? And my ears and my fingers. <laughs> it's Monday morning. I'm taking my dad shopping today because we went out on Friday and got him a new fridge freezer and that got delivered very late on Saturday night. My poor dad. <laughs> Quarter to nine, they delivered it. And they said, oh, you've got to leave it to stand for four hours. 
and he was thinking, I can't go to bed at quarter to one in the morning. And he said he remembered the lady in the shop saying, you need to leave it for three hours. So he went to bed at quarter to 12 after putting his stuff in his new freezer. <laughs> so he said it's going to take him a few days to recover. You've really got to think about these kind of things when life gets, you know, a bit overwhelming for older people and how just buying a new fridge freezer can just be incredibly disruptive. Anyway, I'm rambling on. I've just been grocery shopping with my dad and before I went, I was checking the cupboards to see what we needed. I've defrosted the freezer and what it's most made and what it's and what it's motivated me to do because they're in such a state is sort out my kitchen cupboards and also the rest of the kitchen is in quite a bad state i was grabbing my shopping bags and everything fell out of the airing cupboard and it's only 10 to 2 so the day is quite young and i'm feeling motivated so let's do it so I've done a bit of a tidy up, I've put the shopping away, I've loaded up the dishwasher and I'm going to stick to Marie Kondo's method of just in one category at a time. So I'm just going to do the food cupboards and we've got like tins and things in the drawers as well. I'm not going to sort out like all the crockery and all that sort of thing. So I've taken everything out of the cupboards that food is stored in and I totally get why Marie Kondo suggests putting everything in one place rather than sorting out cupboard by cupboard or area by area and one of the reasons that she gave for that is that you find duplicates which I've done so for example this drawer here I don't know why I'm showing you an empty drawer but anyway, it usually has all the herbs and spices in it. And this cupboard here, the middle one, usually has all the baking ingredients in it, which I've put on the table here. But I have found herbs and spices amongst that. And then this cupboard here, showing you an empty cupboard again, I don't know why, usually has the baking things in it. So sugars, flowers, etc. Um, but I found some sugars amongst the flowers and also other herbs and spices in that cupboard as well. And over here I've just put the drawers on the table and we have like beans and pulses and pasta. And I also found some herbs and spices mixed in there as well. So what I'm going to do now is follow the next step that she recommends where you choose the things that you want to have in your life and it's already set in my mind because of going up and staying at the flats a couple of days a week I know what I've got in the cupboards there which are the things that are like really essential to me so I'm going to start with that and then I'm going to maybe put some of the things in packets in the food bank if I don't want them anymore and there's bound to be loads of things that are past their best before date which can go in the bin. Well, I think I'm getting there. At the moment, I'm in that phase where I feel like it's sucking the life out of me, but I'm just reminding myself that I felt like that when I was sorting out my clothes and my wardrobe as well. And now, it does spark joy every time I open my wardrobe. So, I'm gonna press on. What I've done so far is the drawers under the hob where I keep tins and packets and that kind of thing, and also the spice drawer and I've just gone, right, what do I like having in my spice drawer? And I always like having different herbs, so rosemary, Italian seasoning, oregano, mixed herbs, and paprika, and chilli powder, and then there was duplicates of things like cloves and cinnamon 
and so I've just kept one or two packets of those because I don't use those very often. Um, and yeah, this used to be jammed. This used to be jammed full and now there's space. I've edited my tins right down and there's space behind now. Uh, beans and rice I use a lot. So I've got different kinds of rice. Kamara Rouge, wild rice, brown basmati rice. I think Ben bought the barley. He tends to put that in soups and stews and things. And when Louis became vegan, I bought all these different things like quinoa, but I've never cooked with them yet. So I've yet got to figure out what recipes I could use those for. And then packets of pasta and packets of biscuits, coffee and tea in there. So that's where I've got to so far. And now I need to sort out my like cooking ingredients, cupboards, and my jams and baking ingredients. And I don't really bake, so. <laughs> okay, I'm done. For some reason, I still feel like the lifeblood has been sucked out of me. I think it's because I've been almost four hours on this now and it's kind of a feeling of I've lost four hours of my life. <laughs> um, but I'll let you know as the days go by if it has been a life-changing magical thing. I did feel really good when I was putting two very big bags of stuff I've thrown out in the bin, so that did feel good. Well, it's done. <laughs>
delay or accident or something on the A3 and the sat nav has directed me a different way so that's why it's always worth having the sat nav on even though you know the way and it's taking me on a route where I've got scenery I've never seen before like that little windmill there that's interesting isn't it <laughs> everybody um, it is uh, Thursday morning I'm back at home came back last night the washing machines whirring away I did quite a lot yesterday although I didn't vlog very much so first thing I can think really clearly when I'm at the flat there's nothing else kind of imposing on my brain so I did quite a lot of work for my coaching course then what did I do vacuumed everything and then I didn't do an after never mind that would have been boring anyway <laughs> then I drove to Guildford and I had an interview at another agency that wanted to put me forward for a particular job so quite a few months ago I put my CV online and then different agencies pick it up when it matches jobs that they have on their books so it's for one of my favourite things, which is programming in Visual Basic. Um, I think I'm going to go for an interview tomorrow. Again, it's a full-time job, so I don't know whether that would upset my work-life balance, but it's very nearby and it's for a big corporate company. I don't know, just push every door and see which one's open. <laughs> then uh, I went out with Darcy. She had been at a lecture, so my interview was in Guildford Town Centre and she was there. So we had a cheeky Nando's and then I came back and had a lovely relaxing bath and watched Dirty Thirty, <laughs> caught up with those girls. Um, <clears throat> Ben's got a lot of school work on, so we sat and chatted for a bit and then he had to crack on with his school work. Today, I'm going down to Guildford because I think what Darcy was hoping I would do last night, but it got quite late, was fix a shelf bracket in her room that came undone when they had their party. So I put some shelf brackets up for her keyboard. I'm moving to here because of the washing machine and the budgie. Um, <clears throat> so that she didn't have a keyboard stand in her room. She's got a really small room and that gives her some leg room underneath. But I think people who were staying in her room put like clothes and things on top of her keyboard, which is a bit too much for that bracket. So I've taken, I'm taking the power drills down. That was the other thing I said to her, well, I haven't got the power drills. Then I'm hopefully taking my dad on that trip that went on with Debbie and the week before with Ben, uh, on the cable cars and on the boat. So that's going to be a bit repetitive for you guys, but fun for us, yeah. <laughs> and the reason we're going today, you usually see my dad on a Wednesday, is it's going to be a bit warmer today, it's going to be 10 degrees. So anything 8 degrees and below is like, uh gloves, whereas above 8 degrees you can get away without gloves, so I think it'll be a bit more comfortable. See you later! <laughs> Walking up the Thames along the, uh, you know, from Walsham, for example, on the um, towpath, you don't realise that you're changing direction. You think you're walking in a straight line, but you're not. You suddenly realise the sun's on a different side. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I realized the sun was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> we were heading back again, and I looked at the engines. There was two engines in the aircraft, and one of the props was feathering. Oh my goodness. So you, you had turned back? Yes. Um, <laughs> Friday morning. It is very cold in the UK. It's quarter past eight and I'm just about to go and pick Darcy up to take her to the hospital appointment. And I've got to put the bins out and it's two degrees outside. Oh, I don't know if I've got enough layers on. When I was in London with my dad yesterday, I had three layers on under my coat and I was cold. And I think I've got three layers on again today. But I'm going to be in the car most of the time, I think. So, let's get on with it. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Friday evening. I had a bit of a funny time going to the hospital with Darcy because we turned up at Epsom Hospital, which is titled Epsom and St Helier Hospital. And she was supposed to be at St Helier. <laughs> So we went for a coffee and then I took her home and sorted out a shelf that she needed sorting to put her keyboard on and then I took my dad shopping. So that was exciting wasn't it? <laughs> I'm waiting for a business call, it was supposed to be at 6 o'clock and they haven't called. A couple of other people have called and I thought oh that's this business call and it's not somebody else. 
which is nice. Well, one was one of those ridiculous calls that goes, with the winter here, which it is here now, but <laughs> like a recorded message. But uh, they called all summer saying that as well. And the other one was some people that are coming for dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> All those responses are so cool, some really long comments so that sparked a really interesting discussion. I am just going to be myself, I'm not going to try to do some pretentious thing. I am going to make nice food because I like eating nice food anyway, but I'm going to keep it relaxed and hopefully that will just encourage our group of friends just to get together over relaxed food more than pretentious dinner parties that we have less of because <laughs> they're more effort. I don't know why I've never clocked that before. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, sometimes it's very nice to have a very nice formal dinner, but most of the time it's just because you want to see those friends. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to do chili con carne. I am going to make a bit of a special effort with the pudding though. I'm going to try my hand at banoffee pie because when I clear that